Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the series that nobody asks for, but all of you seem to enjoy. Today I'm going to be trying out even more viral TikTok recipes. We got the world's fluffiest pancakes from Newt, a mango lassi from our good buddy Eton, and then a very strange cheesy rigatoni pasta dish. God, it's like a laser light show in this car right now. Sorry about this. If you were here for the last one, you'd probably remember I had a ton of problems with showing the actual TikToks. That's why I only showed you photos of what I'm making. On one hand, it sucks, because I have to make a completely separate video to show you me reacting to the recipes. You can click the link in the top line of the description to go watch that first. Uh, but on the bright side, at least the extent of my YouTube drama is with 15-year-old TikTokers and Rachel Ray, so... Regardless, this is a very interesting combination of foods, I'm aware, so let's get right into this one. Alrighty, if you couldn't tell, I was on my way to the store, because I gotta pick up quite a few random things for this video. Raspberries and mangoes, that's not too terrible to start with. Then we gotta get into some rigatoni and cream of chicken soup. I just wish I could read the cashier's mind every week when I'm buying stuff for these videos. Today, though, we're starting with Eton's Indian Mango Lassi, and for that I grabbed some heavy cream and vanilla or plain yogurt, a fresh mango, some cardamom, and some honey. I will admit that for stuff like this, TikTok is really good. It's introducing new drinks or dishes from other countries to people who might have never heard of it yet, Including myself. If you asked me a few days ago what a mango lassi is, I would have had no idea. You either have to crush your own cardamom seeds, or just find it in the store already done for you, slice some fresh mango, and then throw everything in a blender, and mix it all together. Right before I poured this into my cup, I was considering chilling it because it seemed a little bit warm, and when I looked back on the actual recipe page, I realized Eton calls for some ice, this was not in the TikTok, I guess it's good to check the actual recipe, and that should help things along. With that though, recipe number one for today is ready to be tasted. So we're definitely starting off pretty tame as far as TikTok recipes can go. It smells really good, I'm just interested to see how the cardamom, mostly, is going to get along with everything else. Whoa! Oh my god. This is freaking delicious. I would love to have this on a beach somewhere with some mango rum under the beaming hot sun. Even if you froze this and like scraped it like a sorbet, I bet you that'd be so good. I don't know if it's traditional or authentic. If anyone knows better, please let me know in the comments. Uh, but it's pretty great, so we're starting off strong. Up next today are Newt's fluffy souffle pancakes. And for those, I grabbed some flour and white sugar, some white vinegar and some eggs, vegetable oil, a little bit of milk, and vanilla extract. Now this one is only moderately more difficult than the last recipe. We have to start by separating some eggs. You would think by the 300th video, I'd be able to separate an egg without cracking the yolk, but clearly not. You need three egg whites, but only two of the yolks. Now the yolks are gonna get the milk and the oil, as well as some flour eventually while the egg whites are going to be whipped up completely separate with a little bit of vinegar to stabilize them. And then the goal is to fold everything together and have a nice, uniform, fluffy batter. By the way, shout out to whoever left a comment on my last video where I separated eggs. Don't use your hand. I never thought about this, but when you use your hand to separate eggs, the oils on your grimy hands get in the egg whites and inhibit it from whipping up. So just use the shell or that water bottle trick, but Thank you to whoever let me know that. I very gently folded my two mixtures together before tossing it into my piping bag and then trying to get some nice, perfectly circular mini pancakes onto my nonstick pan. I guess you could just call this first batch a test run. I tried to flip them way too soon. I didn't really pipe them correctly, so let's just agree to pretend those three never happened. <laughs> the second time around, I piped them in one continuous layer while trying to get even more height on the top of these, because I'm sure they're going to deflate at least a little bit. Another important step here is to cover them and let them sit the entire time they're cooking. That steam will collect and help steam the top, because they're not really going to cook for all that long. I found the keys to this was to make sure your pan was thoroughly greased, give them five to six minutes on each side over very, very low heat. 
And after a couple tries, I didn't hate what I ended up getting. Will this be the video that everything works perfectly and tastes delicious? The mango was a good start, but let's see if this lives up to the first. The food stylists out there, please go easy on me. <laughs> I've never known how to do this stuff. I will say I'm a little bit upset by how much the pancakes have deflated. I don't know why that happened. They're definitely cooked all the way through. I would say they lost about half of their overall height in total. Also, yes, this is real syrup. I'm trying it. <laughs> I'm trying to like it because you guys roast me, but we'll see. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've done two or three other fluffy pancake recipes in the past. Uh, one of which was a peppermint or something, but... Apparently there's a wrestling match going on upstairs. <laughs> Even after they condense down, they're still so light and fluffy. You feel like you're eating a damn cloud or something. They're so good. These are deceptively sweet though. The last ones I made were very mild, very light tasting. There must be a lot more sugar in this one, or at least the flavors must be intensified somehow. I'm happy with them though. They still get like a nine out of 10 in my book. Last but not least today is a recipe that has haunted my nightmares ever since I saw it a few weeks ago. It's this creamy, cheesy, rigatoni chicken dish. I really do encourage you to click the link in the, in the description and watch me watching the TikTok because it is a sight to be seen. But to make it, you're gonna need to grab some rigatoni and a blend of cheeses, salt and dried basil, garlic and cream of chicken, some milk, black pepper, oregano, and water. The uninteresting part of this is just boiling off your rigatoni noodles in some very heavily salted water. Molly Baz would hopefully be very proud of my pasta water salinity. But the interesting part is the sauce, because we have to start with a can of cream of chicken. I always knew this existed, but I never really thought about it. What the hell is cream of chicken? It looks like some radioactive goop or slime or something. It does not look appetizing. And unfortunately for me, the sauce is literally just that, thinned out with some milk and water, loaded up with spices like basil and oregano, which who in the world puts dried oregano in a cream sauce? And then finished off with that pre-shredded mozzarella and provolone cheese. I must be having one of those I'm getting old moments because why in the world this recipe has 8 million views on a social media is beyond me. Regardless though, I made it and now I have to try it. So let's see. What show or movie was something called a creamy chicken surprise. <laughs> Cause that's the only thing I could think of naming this. You know what? I'm just gonna give this that clear gelatin pie treatment. I'm just gonna take a bite, like I just sat down in a nice fancy Italian restaurant. This was served to me by a five-star chef. What the f <laughs> This kinda has me baffled at the moment. No. Mm -mm. The initial hit is not terrible. It just kind of tastes like a chicken cream sauce of some kind. It's just the aftertaste. It almost coats your mouth and leaves like a, a film on your tongue. I mean, how hard could it possibly be to make a good version of this with just chicken stock, pasta water, butter, some cheeses, some spices? Like, it's really not that hard, guys. You know what? I think I'm just gonna take the rest of this, run upstairs to the bathroom, and flush it down the toilet really quick. If I ate it, that's where it would have ended up in 10 minutes anyway, so. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed TikTok Recipes 2.0. If you did, leave me a big old like. Let me know if you want to see a third edition of this, what recipes you'd like to see in that next video. Follow me over on Twitter and Instagram if you don't already. Other than that, have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you right back here next time. Peace. And my money super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my 18 Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision
No. Mm-mm. 